Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh my god. Oh. The show is really, really, really tough to watch. And that is as someone who didn't experience any of this. I cannot even begin to fathom how hard this is to watch for those of you that are watching this video that have lived through that. Guys, what's good? What's going on? Welcome back to another video and welcome uh, to episode three of Fellow Travelers. Now, as always, before we start today's video, I've got to give a huge shout out to that beautiful community over on Patreon. Patreon is the only place where you will ever get to watch all of these reactions completely unedited and in their full length, as well as Patreon exclusive content, access to the Discord server, and just all around great community vibes. So if you want to come and join us over there, the link Links for that are in the description below. Fellow travelers, let me tell you right now, woof. I'm kind of glad that this isn't like a Netflix show and we didn't get all eight episodes or seven episodes at the same time, because I think I need that week's break <laughs> in between each episode. It's just the most wonderful representation. I have to say all of you, to everyone who's reached out with their own stories and have connected with me like I asked in the last episode just know I have received them it's going to take me a couple of weeks to get back to you because I'm in the middle of moving house so as soon as that's done I will connect with you and I'm excited to to make a little bit more content I feel like the stories from this era are very undershared and as a content creator and a filmmaker I want to make sure that I'm doing my part to to highlight the issues that were around then and tell our history the way it should be told so thank you so much to everyone that has reached out I cannot wait to, to connect with you all individually. Right, let's jump on in. Where are they? <laughs> you took that. I remember. Oh, wow. It's a road trip. We need to change that bandage. I'll be fine. Go to your movie. Thank you for dinner. Ooh. Probably well deserved, let's be honest. No, I think she likes me. Oh, she's exhausted. We both need a break. How long are you staying? I'm booked out of here early in the morning. 24 hours. That's a long way to travel for Chinese takeout. It's a lot going on at home. We're moving to Milan. Finally got that European posting. Congratulations. Everything's coming up roses for Hawk. All through dinner, I was wondering, why is he here? Your sister thinks I want to ease my conscience. You'll need a few centuries in purgatory to do that. <laughs> no, I'm Presbyterian. We skip purgatory. Go straight to hell. <laughs> yeah. It's Kaposi sarcoma. Some weird cancer only old European men are supposed to get. My friends and I debate who has the best chance to survive, the ones with KS or the ones with PCP. They say if you have lesions and PCP, it's a matter of months. Have you had... Uh... PCP? Yes. May I use your bathroom? Through the kitchen. How matter of fact Tim is about it. How long has it taken him to get there? <sighs> There you are. He's all mine tonight. I'm dragging him to the symphony. Good night, you two. Are you going out of town? Yeah, it's an old army friend. He's not doing well. We're invited to Roger and Marie's Saturday. Did you forget? God, I just found out about my friend yesterday. I meant to tell you. What was that for? Tolerating Ravel. <laughs> Let about the bull. Very Norma Desmond. If you know, you know. Your tip checks out. A couple years ago, an army corporal sent a letter to Senator Benton. Big McCarthy critic. Went down in flames in 52. Exactly. Described an alleged incident with McCarthy. Don't know the details, but Benton lost the election and never followed up. Where's his corporal now? Selling himself in Rehoboth Beach. Ooh, nice place to spend a weekend. You going alone? I am. That doesn't mean I'll be alone. Few rise on you down there. On the house. Seen Tim lately? He walked out my door. Mm. Apparently I offend his sense of morality. You offend my sense of morality. And now that you care, but you miss his birthday, he noticed. I fucking love Marcus. It's just like this slay of a middle ground between Tim and Hawk. And I, I really hope we get to understand more about him as a character because I just think he is, he feels very complex and like there's a lot to him and I, I want to understand what all those layers are. Did you sign them? God bless you, son. The point of these closed door hearings is to- Mr. Laughlin. I see you've been promoted. Head water boy. Mr. Fuller? I've decided to forgive you. Forgive me? You haven't called in three weeks. Four. How do I love thee? <laughs> Let me count the weeks. 
I'm going away for the weekend. I hope you enjoy yourself. I will, if you join me. That letter you made me write, Mary, was the ugliest thing I have ever Shh. done. It was all for the best, wasn't it? We're still employed, including Mary. Listen, Skippy, I want to spend the weekend with you. Go back to the office, tell Dragon Lady you don't feel well. Meet me on the southwest corner of Independence and Third in 15 minutes. 15? Green Ford. Oh, and happy birthday. Look at that power that Hawk has over Tim, that he can instantly, no matter how Tim is feeling, just wrap him around his finger and get whatever he wants from, from him. It's... I'm sure a lot of people see that as like a very sexy thing that he is like he oozes that much power but I just it feels very manipulative to me and as time goes on I feel like we're going to see Tim hurt time and time again because of Hawk's ability to manipulate and use him like a piece of play-doh and just form him into whatever he needs him to be at any one time. I feel very bad for Tim for that. McCarthy's man. How's it going with the Italian communists? When I left, he was weeping. Cowards always cry when they get caught. His mother had just died. Waste your pity on our enemies. Christ says we should love our enemies. What has gotten into you? I don't feel well, I should go home. Sorry! Oh, Tim. Kinda love it, kinda hate it. Wanna see Tim happy, but don't wanna see Tim hurt. But that's a fine line we're gonna be, <laughs> be treading in this whole series. Oh, okay. This is nice. How's it going? Don't. Got to. Interviewing someone about the transit union strike. It's a paycheck. You miss it, don't you? The Senate beat. Not as much as my father misses it. Don't you know I'm supposed to be the Jackie Robinson of journalism? <laughs> if you need a break from wallowing, come to our show tonight. Duke's at Foggy Bottom. That's a white club. And I don't think it's queer. No, those white squares love storming. Do I scare you? How would you scare me? Well, for one, I'm not exactly like the studs you used to leave the bar with. I'm a man who likes to fuck men, and I don't apologize. For it. Sorry if that came out a little rough. My dad was a drunk ex-boxer. I can handle myself. The question is, can you handle me? <laughs> Love it. Welcome to the famous Nomad Bar. Is this my birthday present? More like an education. Educate me. Clientele or DC professionals who can afford a weekend away. If you're safer out here. The way that Tim looks at Hawk. Let me take a little stroll out back. I gotta take a little walk. An army friend next door, Bill and I are helping out. You're sure he has the goods? He says he does. This makes you wonder how many pies Hawk has his fingers in. Hey. Corporal Cherney, I'm Sergeant Fuller. Bill's friend. Hey, snap out of it, Corporal. We need to talk. Hawk, goofballs. Oh, dear. Corporal Cherney, I hear you got a story about McCarthy. You got a cigarette? Do you know how the East Coast elite refers to the three of you? Bonnie. Bonnie and Clyde. It's not funny, Senator. Perhaps we should focus on things we can control. So true. Well, has it occurred to you that the three men leading the Christian crusade against communism are all bachelors? Hmm. Cross my mind. You won't have to worry about David much longer. Someone managed to get his draft status changed from 4F to 1A. Eligible to serve. <laughs> I can't be drafted. An officer is one thing, but an enlisted man living in the barrack, taking orders from the, the kinds of brutes that you see fighting on 14th Street that I wouldn't let shine my fucking shoes. I won't let that happen, too. <laughs> What's the matter, Dave? I am a man of power and influence, and I always get what I want. Don't you dare mock me! You can't help a friend when he needs you the most. Wait, where, where are you going? New York. I have a date. She's beautiful. She's got tits like you wouldn't believe. And Roy, she will do everything anything for me. Now I didn't realize this until someone pointed it out in the comments because it's been many years since I've seen it but obviously Roy Cohen is heavily featured in the play Angels in America and I went to go see that when it was here in London many many years ago probably about five years ago now and it was he was portrayed by the phenomenal Nathan Lane so I know a little bit it's been a, a hot minute, but I know a little bit about Roy Cohen's story so it's interesting to kind of see these stories intertwine in a way. So yes, I am, I am very familiar with how this piece of shit did business and who he really is. Hello. Hi. Oh, interesting, Tim. Okay. I shouldn't have done that. Why not? I'm with someone. You've been sitting by yourself. Anyone that leave you behind doesn't deserve to keep you. 
Some damn truth in that. Poor Tim. Wonder how many other opportunities in Tim's life he passes up potential opportunities to be genuinely happy for Tim. Obviously, this is a, a bit of a, a weak example of that, but it does make you think, like, I wonder how many times he does that through the next 30 years. Whoever wrote the score for this show, well done. Hawk! Shit. Skippy! Hey, stop it. I don't like being spied on. I don't like being abandoned. Who was that? It's a friend of Bill's. The kid's having some trouble. I had some business. I didn't think it would take long, and then you and me could... We could, we could what? Buck like rabbits comes to mind. Tim, what do you want? I want to be with you. Okay, let's go inside. No, I want to be with you. Sleep in the same bed with you all night, not get kicked out at midnight. I want to eat a meal like other couples. Oh, Tim. We have never eaten in a restaurant. Men do eat in restaurants. I could be your cousin. Nephew. From the poor side of the family. <laughs> Obviously. I can't imagine how this must have been. It hurts to think about it. Having to be so calculated all the time. Hey, is Grandma there? Oh, oh. oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. You okay? Grandpa has to go, okay? No, don't come in! Get out! Oh my God. I'm gonna help you up, okay? Come on! Oh, I got to oh. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get you covered up. My legs buckled. What do you want, Hawk? You come here looking for forgiveness? Because I don't have any left to give. I'm too angry to forgive anybody. I need to see you, Skippy. Just go right. wash your hands. You need an AIDS test. I don't have any cuts in my hands. I'm not talking about my blood. I'm talking about your life. I was going to ask in that, I can't remember what year it, it said it was for like that, that last part of the story. Was it like 1986 or something? You'd be interested to understand like how much we actually knew about AIDS as a disease. At that point, which, I mean, they've obviously done the research and figured out where we were with it. Ooh, scary, scary, scary stuff. I can't, even now, like, it's hard to think of, it's hard to truly comprehend how it must have been in the 80s to have something so deadly and so awful with no knowledge of what it is. Like, that's so hard to, to comprehend because in my lifetime, I've only ever known what we know about it now, if that makes sense. It's just really, and it's, I think because when, when we think of these kind of things, we think, oh, it, it's such a long time ago that we didn't know about X, Y, and Z. You know, this was 40 years ago that this virus, that this disease was spreading, killing so many people and we knew nothing about it. It's just horrifying. Again, I, I know I said it in the last episode, I said it at the beginning of this, I'm very, very passionate and driven now about delving much more into this side of our history and understanding it better and representing it as much as I can through the work that I do. I feel like a, like a flame has been lit in me now. You have a reservation? Yes, sir. One of the performers put me on the list. Are you alone? Yes. Let me see if I can find something for you. Just one moment, please. Sure. My uncle is treating me to dinner. Don't overdo it, Skippy. You're not a convincing liar. <laughs> Maybe you should give me some lessons. Ooh, Ben. Take it easy on the wine, nephew. You never told me. How did you end up at the State Department? I came out of the war with four assets. Degree from Penn, Heroes, War Record. You have the makings of a competent, mid-level foreign service bureaucrat. Not an ambassador. An ambassador can't have what I'm looking for. And what are you looking for? Complete personal freedom. You mean not giving yourself to something or somebody? If you want to see it that way. Tim, the red flags are there. How does Lucy Smith see? I'm cutting you off. <laughs> The defiance, I love it. To me like you do at home. You won't admit you love me. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. But please oh don't my God. Oh. Oh God. Come on, please say he gets in. Mary asked what's the whole thing? Unfortunately, there's been an overbooking. We just don't have any more tape. What about standing room with a bag? Huh? So this is how you're dodging the desegregation laws? Overbooking reservations? I think you should leave. You mean I think you should leave, nigger. I don't want to waste my money in this alley dump anyway. Marcus, what's going on? They won't let you in? Just forget it. I'm leaving anyway. No. Who do you think all of these people came to see? Egos or you both go? What are you trying to say? That's not my fucking boyfriend! Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. Marcus, wait! Why'd you do that back there? To them? I'm just another Negro walking around around Foggy Bottom, but you had to come out and make it worse. I was standing up for you. I don't need you to stand up for me. Oh, you're upset because he called us fags in front of all those good paying white folks. They folk. called you one! Cover yourself up and get out of the street before you get yourself arrested. Like it's not hard enough being homosexual in this time. Like add all the racial issues on top of it. It must have been just so hard. Hawk? 
I embarrassed you. I can't have this. I know. You can't have this. You'd rather be with one of the guys from the Nomad. Someone who doesn't ask questions. At the bar, I kissed a man. Congratulations. Could have gone home with him. He wanted me. You want me to be rough train? Hit me. <coughs> Again. <coughs> Take your pants off. All of it. Who do you belong to? Who do you belong to? You. I belong to Hawkins Fuller. Oh. Wow. Well, Max, what are you gonna do? He's gonna write the story. It was surreal. Tonight, I was blocked at the door as mm, white good. people walked right in. Can I come in? I'm not sure. Would you read this? I need your opinion. The words just, just kept coming. Oh, I can tell. It's good, really good, but I don't mean to sound like a prima donna, but where am I? The bouncer called us fags. You forget that? Frankie, that's not a fight I can win right now. I'll always be a colored man first. It's all folks see. When I was a kid, no one noticed me, which was a good thing, because when they noticed me, it was with a curse or a smack or a shove. But the first time I went full drag to a club in a cheap Halloween wig and a borrowed poodle skirt, people noticed. They looked at me. I'm looking at you. McCarthy noticed I like bourbon. At some point he says he wants to see the town. So we stopped off a few places, ended up getting a room in a motor hotel, kept on drinking. I see where this is going. That's all? No. Senator performed sodomy on me. Was it my first time? I'm that way, especially when I drink. I'm not proud of it. I'm not judging you. Bill said you have evidence. He said you have money. Take care of yourself. I can't even wrap my head around the fact that I'm sure you, you'll all either confirm or deny what I was saying about Shine and Cohen, but obviously we know, I know for a fact that Cohen was gay and ended up dying of AIDS. McCarthy is obviously gay as well. And it's just unthinkable to imagine how many queer lives they ruined as queer men themselves. That is... Can anybody actually recommend any good books around this whole subject? I would. I really want to do my part of getting clued up in this history, but if anyone has any really good book recommendations for that, I would be eternally grateful if you can pop that in the comments for me. Are we going now? Yeah. I have to get back. Back to leaving in the middle of the night. Sneaking down the stairs, lying. Skippy, everybody lies about something. You and me, we lie about who we sleep with. I know it hurts you, because you're good and sweet. But the lying gets easier. Eventually it doesn't hurt as much, because you have no choice. To say at this point it's a necessary evil, right? We didn't have the privileges that we have today. And in some countries they still don't have that. Not who we sleep with. Is he about to say what I think he's going to say? It's who we love. And there's the difference between Tim and Hawk. Even back then, Tim was emotionally invested. And maybe Hawk is, but he just doesn't show it. I and mean, he kind of has shown it in places. Do you and your partner use condoms? No, she's my wife. Have you had a sexually transmitted disease in the past year? No. Have you injected drugs or shared needles in the past year? Of course not. In the past six months, have you had sex with another man? Yes. Hmm. Penetrative? Yes, with condoms. Were you an active or a passive participant? Active, always. What is the frequency of these sexual contacts? Oh, it's not frequent, it's, uh, I don't know, three, three or four times a year. With the same partner? Not if I can help it. Okay, you can roll up your sleeve now. So if he's not been tested, it's Freddie Mercury. Yeah. I mean, could that be a more appropriately placed song? A song by Freddie Mercury, and it's The Great Pretender. Oh. The show is really, really, really tough to watch, and that is as someone who didn't experience any of this i cannot even begin to fathom how hard this is to watch for those of you that are watching this video that have lived through that and what that must bring up for you and the show is touching on so many things right it's touching on lgbt history it's touching on racial issues it's touching on the war it's touching on politics it's touching on the aids epidemic like it's there's so much that's happening in this show I'm like, is this going to be a one and done? Is is there going to be more to this? Like, it, it just feels like there's so much story to tell here and it's so important and they're doing it so incredibly. But already, I mean, we're three episodes in. This is only a seven episode season. 
And I'm just wondering, like thinking ahead, like, are they going to be able to tell all the story that they want to tell or need to tell in that time? I don't know. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out over this next four episodes. But I think we can all agree this show has already in three episodes solidified itself as one of the best queer shows we have ever had the sheer size and volume and production of it is truly astounding and it's it's making me very happy to see how it's resonating positively across the board everyone is loving it everyone is saying how hard it is to watch but how important it is that we do watch it and yeah it's it's uh, parts of it are so wild it I almost want it to be fiction because I don't want to believe that people have lived in a time where this was life and that makes it even sadder knowing that it is <sighs> What is going to become of Tim and Hawk? I see, uh, as each episode goes on, I don't, I don't have a massive emotional attachment to Hawk. There's, I said it in the first episode. He, I, for me, he doesn't have very many redeeming qualities, and I'm kind of torn in saying that because I feel like is a part of or a big part of the way he is, just as a man who is trying to survive. I don't know, but then. <sighs> Tim. I really hope Jonathan Bailey wins awards for this because I feel like this is something special. What he's portraying right now is something very, very, very special and something that is desperately something that on this scale is so important. So important. But yeah, as I said earlier in the episode, if anyone has any book recommendations for history on this period, I would like queer history on this period, I would greatly appreciate the recommendation. I'm going to have a lot of time for, for reading coming up soon, so I, I'd greatly appreciate that. But yeah, that was episode three. Four more days to episode four, thank God. <laughs> but right that is it for today's video folks as always if you would like to see the full unedited version of this reaction you're only going to find that over on patreon and the links for that are in the description below if you could please take two seconds out of your day just to drop down and smash that like button it truly makes the world of difference to this channel i greatly greatly appreciate you all taking the time to do that but yeah that is it for today's video guys and until next time i will catch you in a few